Hello everyone, Father John Camus here, pastor of the Church of Saint Jean Baptiste on 76th Street and Lexington Avenue. So we're gathering together to celebrate the second Sunday of Lent. And as we continue our Lenten journey, we listen to two magnificent journeys in the history of the faith. Abraham leaves his country with his precious son, only to have his devotion and obedience to God tested. We're not going to read this one, but it's an important one. So just keep that in mind. This is one of the images that we have behind the reading today. Then in the gospel reading, Jesus leads his closest disciples up a high mountain where he is transfigured in glory. So may our Lenten practice of fasting, prayer, and almsgiving transform us into more loving and devoted disciples. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, you are God's beloved Son. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were transfigured in glory. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. God, our Father, help us to hear and listen to your Son. Enlighten us with your word, that we may find the way to your glory. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So again, just to recap a little bit, uh, the first reading of the day, it's a little longer reading, and it's the story of Abraham and Isaac. So very simply, God challenges Abraham. Uh, he promised him a son, and he promised him to be the father of great nations through that son. But God asked him to sacrifice his son in loyalty to God. Abraham is about to do so when the angel comes, stops Abraham, and God reforges a covenant with his people. So it's a covenant of faith, deep, deep faith that Abraham has. Now I'll read the gospel reading. Here we move from that call of faith that we see in Abraham so powerfully to a challenge to the faith of the disciples. There's, there are challenges to figure out who is this Jesus. And this is the first step in that process. So today the gospel is taken from the gospel of Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. He was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white such as no fuller on earth could possibly bleach. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses and they were conversing with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. And the cloud, from the cloud came a voice this is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus there alone with them. And as they, were, as they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them not to relate what, had, what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man has risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. So just before I begin uh, our reflection today, I just want you to think of the pieces of this story. And I'd like you to think of it as almost like a painting or an icon, because icons especially invite us into the mystery of the presentation. What is that saying to us? What's it teaching us? So we have the three disciples, we have Jesus, 
covered in a cloud or surrounded by a cloud, brilliantly clothed in, in sunlight white, and Moses and Elijah in conversation with him. Right, so just a couple of little things ab about this image. The cloud reminisces all the times that God appeared to the Jewish people in the desert, uh, in the cloud, the mysterious cloud would come upon the meeting tent and Moses would enter the tent and speak with God. And when he came out, he was shining very much the same way Jesus is shining in bright light. Moses and Elijah represent the past, the law, Moses giving a structure to the Jewish people. Elijah, the most powerful uh, prophet in the Old Testament, right? and the one who was supposed to come and announce the coming of the Messiah, he would, that he would return. Uh, and we look at that image, we think of John the Baptist being that one who proclaims his coming. He's the new Elijah. Right? So those are the images that we see. And now let's reflect. So in the Gospel narratives, the transfiguration of Jesus is a prelude to the resurrection to come. After the three disciples had witnessed his transfiguration, Jesus told them not to say anything about what they had seen. And Mark ends the passage by commenting that they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. This comment throws a challenge our way. We, like the disciples, must discover what the resurrection means. Every year, for a period of 40 days, we dedicate ourselves to acts of penance and fasting to prepare ourselves for the celebration of Easter, the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Have you ever asked yourself why we go through all this just to celebrate a moment in ancient history? Actually, we're not celebrating an historical anniversary. Fasting and penance are tools, along with prayer and acts of charity, which we use to lift ourselves from the earthly plane to the spiritual plane, maybe what we could call the eternal now. This is where we discover the meaning of rising from the dead. We can and should remember Jesus as an historical figure. He was a teacher, a healer, a miracle worker. He was betrayed by one of his followers and sadistically executed. This is the story of the historical Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. The accounts of his resurrection and appearances to his disciples give witness to a Jesus liberated from the constraints of the historical plane. He appears to his disciples while they're in hiding in the upper room. He teaches them, he eats with them. He appears to two of them as they flee Jerusalem. He teaches them and breaks bread with them. He promises that he'll be with them until the end of time. This is the resurrected Jesus. This is Jesus, the universal Christ, who is no longer bound by the restrictions of space and time. The transfiguration is an icon of the resurrected Christ who is in union with all of salvation history, past and present. In this eternal now, he is in conversation with Moses and Elijah while still present to the three disciples who came to him, came with him to the mountaintop. This is the Jesus who at the last supper that he had with his disciples before he died said, this is my body. This is my blood of the new covenant. The resurrected Jesus speaks those same words at our Eucharist today. Lent is our communal retreat when we contemplate the meaning of the resurrection. This comes through prayer 
and inner purification that frees us to love more deeply, to love as Jesus loved unconditionally. Lent is the church's time to reflect on the meaning of rising from the dead. The transfiguration is the icon the church gives us to contemplate the mystery of resurrection. This image of the resurrected and universal Christ is our invitation to transcend this earthly plane with him, to heed the Father's message, to listen to him. So we're going to gather our prayers now. So it is good that we are here in the presence of the transfigured Lord as we pray for our needs and the needs of our brothers and sisters. So first of all, we pray, may the Lord guide, inspire, and strengthen us as we work with Christ to transform our world into the promised kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. And for our world leaders, may they resist the temptation of power and wealth and embrace the work of justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all those who are preparing for baptism this Easter, may this Lent, the final days of their preparation, open God's love to them. Let us pray to the Lord. And for each of us, may this Lent be a time for us to refocus our faith and recommit to Christ and his teachings. Let us pray to the Lord. Let's pause now. Let's all gather our personal intentions. <coughs> <coughs> Lord of compassion and mercy, you stayed the hand of Abraham and reassured the terrified disciples. May we heed your word as you hear our prayers, which we make through your beloved Son, the source of our salvation. Amen. So blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And we pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands for the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of all the church. Lord, make us holy. May this Eucharist take away our sins that we may be prepared to celebrate the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. On your holy mountain, he revealed himself in glory in the presence of his disciples. He had already prepared them for his approaching death. He wanted to teach them through the law and the prophets that the promised Christ had to first suffer and so come to the glory of the resurrection. In our unending joy, we echo on earth the song of the angels in heaven as they praise your glory forever. And we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy, indeed the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this all of you and eat it. This is my body which will be given up for you. And when supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink from it. But this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world and make us grow in love, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all and make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now to prepare to receive our communion, we call to mind the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we, called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul will be healed.
Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for these holy mysteries which bring us here on earth a share in the life to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we bow down our heads and we pray for God's blessing. We rejoice that you are our creator and ruler. As we call upon your generosity, renew and keep us in your love. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. We go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. So I'll see you next week where we'll be celebrating the third Sunday in Ordinary Time. Oh, pardon me, not the third Sunday in Ordinary Time, the third Sunday of Lent. So see you next week.